coaches don't lack the ability to teach coaches just need some new and fresh tools to teach the same things that they're already teaching what you and most coaches do really well is see the things that need to be corrected where most of us have an opportunity to continue to grow is utilize other tools in our tool belt in order to teach those things raise your hand or give a thumbs up if you find yourself repeating yourself a lot yes me as well all coaches do and we hate it now my commitment is to give you four tools that you can add to your tool belt that when you find that the tool you're using isn't working go to one of these other tools tool number one cold call when you identify something that needs to be done and we've all done this like i'm coaching you as a team and i've seen that cliff um, needs correction but of course when i correct cliff i want everyone else to listen because they're probably in the same situation we probably said everyone pay attention when i'm talking to cliff i'm talking to everyone i don't have to repeat myself and you should make the same mistake that cliff's making and then we talk to cliff no matter how much we say that when we're talking to cliff everyone else is less engaged and less focused on the correction than cliff cold calling fixes it and it helps your coaching transfer to more players so how do you do it one if you're ever going to teach something new you must get in the habit of calling your players in close to you all of us that have been parents or or been a child know that when it's time to have a serious conversation with your child and you want to correct them you get down on a knee you get down to their level you get close to them to get their engagement and their awareness when we try to teach our team across a full court or a half court we lose engagement than if we're tight to them if it's more than a seven second reminder that you've already taught bring them in when you bring them in let's say identify something i need to coach cliff on cold calling would be tina did you see what cliff needs to do better there heck no she didn't she has no clue she wasn't watching cliff she's like no i didn't brian what did you see that cliff needs to do better there maybe he does maybe he doesn't he'll say something which probably isn't exactly what i wanted to say i cold call without asking who saw I cold call and I pick on the people that I know probably weren't engaged or like I, I actually want Brian to know this uh, when I would teach Cliff so I asked Brian if he saw it he didn't so when we normalize this cold calling very soon when players come in they're coming in like oh man is it me what is it that I was just doing oh is coach gonna ask me I better what just happened that last possession and they're replaying in their mind they're more engaged they're more attentive whatever it is that you're going to correct on they will receive it better and even more importantly they'll start to move their eyes around always being aware because they know they can be called on at any time so then i will actually say cliff you were in this situation blank be blank be blank be blank does this tool take a little more time to use than just saying cliff you gotta punt nines yeah it does it does take more time to use but if i find myself telling cliff and others on my team to constantly hunt nines over and over again and it hasn't had an impact you're using the wrong tool second one self-assessment one thing that i will often do if i identify something especially from a standpoint of energy or communication or hustle and effort or an attention to detail like precision if we're lacking in one of those um areas I'll just bring them around and say, okay, I want everyone to give me on the count of three, like a thumbs up for like the best you've ever done to like average what you normally do to below average worse than that you normally give. On the count of three, I just want you to throw a thumb out, all 12, 15, 20, however many players. All right, one, two, three. Doesn't matter what they do. They just did a self check. And very rarely do people do this. Very rarely. So all we've identified is they've got more to give. And so then I'll ask a question. I'll be like, all right, what's holding you back? from giving the best effort that you've ever given for the next five minutes and sometimes you get some answers and sometimes you don't it's fine either way then you say okay on the count of three i want you to show me what you're willing to commit to giving for the next five minutes one two three most players most of the time will juice it up a little bit and most teams most of the time will have a better result for the next five minutes and so self-assessing as opposed to saying come on and yelling or whatever that's exhausting for us um is another tool now is there a time to bring the passion and lead from the front absolutely there's a time but 
let's just get another tool. What percent of your coaching in practice is one-on-one -on -one conversations quietly with a player, not in front of the team? Having a one-on-one -on -one conversation in the midst of practice is a tool. And it's a tool that most of us don't go to often enough. I would suggest that your most influential players and often like your better players need a lot more of it because they can take and implement more coaching than the whole team can. And, you know, if we were to say, okay, I'm going to commit to having X amount, 10 one-on-one -on -one conversations this practice, and you put it on your practice plan as a commitment, or I'm going to commit to have one per progression. If you have six progressions in your practice plan, I'll have one one-on-one -on -one conversation for progression. It's going to allow you to change where your eyes are looking as well. Right. And I think the best coaches have an eye that zooms out, sees what the whole group needs, then zooms in and sees what individual coaching their best player needs, their best players. Your best players should get more one on one coaching. They should. Now, it doesn't mean you don't give that one on one connection and love and care to everybody. But like if Claire's a first time basketball player and Nick's, you know, our, our senior starter, Claire can only take one thing to focus on all practice long. So I go, you know, you know, put your arm around her, give her, give her a high five and say, all right, Claire, this practice, all I want you to focus on is your bolts. I'm going to be, I'm going to be watching your bolts all practice long. You have got to improve your bolts in this practice. I believe in that went head down bolts, right? Whereas Nick, I might be able to give him something different every five minutes. Um, but individual coaching is another tool. When you see something's going on that's wrong, you know, instead of just talking to everybody, maybe I go to Jason and be like, Jason, I need you to go and get two other influential leaders. And between the three of you over the next 10 minutes, I want you to try to remind players to communicate and transition defense. Like that'd be a one-on-one -on -one conversation and another way to try to move the needle on whatever it is you're trying to move the needle on. Last one, call your shot. Got to give a big shout out to Doug Lamov here. Um, as many of these are from his book, Practice Perfect. Call Your Shot is one of the 72 tools for coaches. Uh, this is a must, must read if you want to become a master teacher. Calling Your Shot is this. We have a lens as coaches. We see things. And we assume incorrectly that players see the same things that we do or saw the same thing that we do. Calling Your Shot is directing a player's attention to something in advance so that you can teach it after they observe it. If you teach something that only you observed, it has very, very poor uptake. I'll give you a very simple example. Um, I was uh, this clinic I did this last weekend in Utah. I demonstrated a shot. Let's say it was a rocker. After the shot, what do you think, coaches? Nearly every player watched and was focused on from the start to the finish to the, of the shot. The ball. Everybody knows what it is. It was the ball. And then if the shot went in, they thought I was a good teacher and they listened to me. If the shot missed, they're like, this guy sucks, whatever. So they're just focused on the shot, right? Which is why I am limiting the amount that I shoot now because that's just what people look at. Anyway, so then if I went in to start teaching about my hips, what a waste of time. They didn't look at my hips. They have no clue what I was talking about with my hips. I had to, and this is what I did. I said, okay, I want you to focus on my hips here. I called my shot. I directed it, watch my hips. And I want you to tell me if my hips go down with the ball or if they work opposite the ball. Watch five shots and just watch my hips. Five shots. They watch my hips. Then I said, okay, what did you see? Right. Then we debriefed what they saw. My hips went down with the basketball. Then the, we broke the string. The ball moved up before my hips moved. Right. And we uncovered all of that because I called my shot first. That's a, a, a very simple example. But in everything, like if you're going to talk about defensive positioning, what we tend to do is stop, go back to where you were five seconds before. Okay. As opposed to, if we, especially this works especially well when you have players on the sideline, and I think that you should actually have your best players on the sideline watching more and tell your players in advance, okay, I want you to watch where we play uh, one pass away in the gap to the left of the basketball. I want you to watch that for five possessions and tell me what you think we're doing well and what we need to do better. That would be a call your shot moment. But this is after you've observed the starters and identified that they're in the wrong position in that moment. And then you've got to say, call your shot and have them watch it. And then you coach them. Does that tool take a little more time? Yes. Is it multiplier more effective? Absolutely. Um, but it causes us to actually observe, think, plan, and execute. And a lot of times calling your shot works best in the one-on-one -on -one conversations.
I noticed that Jake needs this thing. So I pulled Jake aside. I said, Jake, I want you to watch. I want you to watch Tina here. And I want you to watch her in the gap for the next three possessions. Then we're going to have a one-on-one conversation about her gap positioning. That's calling your shot. Use cold calls, use self-assessments, and use one-on-one conversations when you find yourself banging your head against the wall, repeating yourself, and the tool you're using is just not working. I hope that everyone kind of sees how these four tools kind of work together to help us teach better.